Hello and welcome to Black Geyser, Couriers of Darkness. This video is kindly sponsored, and if you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. This is a, uh, well, very interesting, deep RPG with real-time combat with pause, and we're about to check it out a little bit here. So we're going to start a new game. There are a lot of different classes that you can choose from, and there are a lot of predetermined characters that you can also select if you don't really feel like creating your own. However, because I would very much like to showcase a lot of the features of this game, I would very much like to create a new one. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go straight in here. If you would like to skip the character creation that I'm doing right now, then you can check out the chapters below in the description, or you can just click on the little timeline on the video player itself. So you can see here we have five different races. You have human, dwarves, elf, Feldgug as well as Rillo and yeah you can see this guy he looks very exotic doesn't he he looks extremely well kind of weird to me kind of weird to me but yeah I'm thinking we're probably gonna go for Feldgug or something like that maybe or I, I'm maybe an elf I actually have no clue what is best for like a barbarian kind of character I'm actually kind of thinking I'll play something like that you know i'd like to have a big two-handed axe or something i don't know that would be kind of fun so i'm thinking maybe something like that mm, i mean this guy this guy looks pretty cool actually i i really like how he looks to be honest so i'm thinking we're probably going to do that and we're going to go on to the class so these are the classes huge amounts of different classes also bear in mind that whenever you make a decision in this game the world is going to react to it. There is a system known as greed, and if you do evil acts, then the goddess of greed will be very pleased with you, but if you don't, then, well, other things may happen. Other better things may happen, and you might keep the, well, the little flicker of flame of hope alive, and uh, yeah, so on and so forth. Anyway, clerics, convokers, druids, Fighters, Highlanders, Necromancers, Rangers, Spellweavers, Swindlers, Thieves, and Winter Mages. They are all of the classes that you can select from. And I'm actually not entirely sure which one I want to go for. I think the Highlander sounds like the best. Let's have a look here. I mean, sounds like the best for, for me and what I'm what I'm currently going to try and focus on here. But I would kind of like to use a little bit of spells too. So maybe a cleric, but I think that looks super, I don't know, I feel like that looks super weird sort of thing. Mm, not as combat oriented. Yeah, that's the thing. What about a convoker? Ooh, a convoker is like a summoning class. Look at that. Okay, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna go for Highlander, I think, just generally because you can see here they prefer thick armor that doesn't restrict their movement and helps them blend into natural environments. While they can pick up and use any weapon, they prefer prefer the roar, uh, roar crushing power of clubs and hammers. That sounds really really fun. You can literally add more classes, by the way, so that you can multi class. And in my opinion, that is actually insane and really very welcome because that means that i can multi-class into something like cleric like i said before i actually would like to do something like this it does however say that this is recommended for experienced players so i probably won't be doing that this time around but it's really nice to know that that is there in the game anyway we're going to move on okay so let's take a look here so i have 22 points to distribute and what is supernatural this is interesting the value of supernatural increases the character's resistance values against various forms of damage, and it also enables uh, further special abilities for warriors and outlaws and increases the number of elevated energy slots for wizards and priests. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, so charisma is obviously the talky-talky skill, you know, persuasion sort of thing. Focus, mental strength, intelligence is very much a case of, well, using spells, obviously. And physique is generally what we're going to be going for most of the time, I think. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm literally just going to... Oh, I can only put 13 points. I actually wanted to just dump a huge amount of points in physique because I wanted him to be 
the biggest, buffest guy in the world. But yes, well, 13, I think, is probably going to be pretty decent anyway. Aim values. Okay, yeah, that needs to be pretty high in my opinion too. Okay, so supernatural. Various forms of damage. Okay, yeah, we, we might want to do... Oh, actually, these are the forms of damage that uh, they're talking about here. Heat, cold, poison, and acid. So, generally, because I feel like his race seems to come from a rather wintry land, I'm thinking that maybe having some cold resistance might actually make sense. So we're going to give him 10% cold resistance, and I can actually increase my supernatural by a pretty significant amount so i could literally go for something like five or whatever but i'm maybe thinking that we want to spec a little bit of uh, a couple of points in charisma here as well the ability to evade and dodge as well as blocking and reduces the chance of their actions being interrupted by incoming damage focus does sound really really good actually so let's go for a little bit of focus here as well Mm, oh, I'm so bad at distributing points. I really am. Okay, we're going to go for one less in that, and then we'll do, We'll just do this. He's going to be a bit dumb. So his intelligence is going to be four. Uh, yes. Yes, I, I think this is absolutely fine. I would actually like to reduce intelligence even further, but let's not, shall we? Okay, so I, I have no idea whether this is any good, but I'm thinking we might want to go for that. Okay, so uh, skills and spells. Okay, so what do we want to go for? Oh my, there's a lot. Ooh, enables additional dialogue choices themed around warriors. Yes, that sounds fun. Okay, yes, I think I will be probably taking that. I'm going to take uh, a look at a bunch of the other things as well, because let's face it, it would probably be a good idea. Ah, force locks and doors. That sounds pretty fun too. How many how many skills do I have? I mean, how many points do I have? Oh, I actually have a lot more. Okay, I only have one. I only have one point for class specific. I'm going to go for seasoned warrior. Or am I? Because I already have these other things. Offers the ability to become the leader of the party. The commander of the group can designate various battlefield tactics to follow, which results in group-wide bonuses. Hmm, that might actually make more sense. Because we, I mean, we do have a, a pretty significant amount of charisma, don't we? I'm, I'm actually thinking I'm going to go for this. Yes, I'm going to go for Seasoned Warrior. I think that sounds super, super fun. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. What about Bargain and Persuasion? Brewing and Drying? What is that? Offers the ability to craft potions and powders. Ah, okay, yeah. Well, I'm going to go for Bargain and Persuasion with the other point there. And we also now have the ability to use different weapons. So, obviously, because Highlanders, they are known for using hammers and clubs and things like that, I will probably be putting a bunch of points in this. I'm just going to put two points in War Clubs and Hammers. And then we're probably going to try and use something else. What about two-handed? Um, what about large blades? Large blades seems kind of fun. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use long swords and great swords and things like that. I think that seems pretty cool. And then we have our abilities to choose from. So we have four abilities here. We have Challenging Howl, which is obviously just a taunt, which is good to know. And we also have Prolonged Berserk. Warriors who rely on primal might train rigorously to become able to summon their inner range at will, grants enraged and indomitable to the target. That sounds pretty cool. Mm, attempts a ranged attack to disrupt the target's defenses. Next attack deals 20% increased damage. And waylay attempts a disabling attack against the target that aims to prevent their movement. The user's next attack inflicts a status effect. Okay, the status effect is slow for slash damage, immobilized for piercing damage, and knockdown. Okay, so we're going to go for prolonged berserk. Because I personally think that me doing massive damage is probably going to be conducive to winning fights. Uh, obviously, I'm going to hope that some of our companions will be able to handle the immobilization effects. At least that's what I'm going to go for. Then you can pick what he wants to look like. So, you know, obviously, if you are playing a... Uh, a different um, different kind of character, then obviously you can decide whatever you want to look like. 
but I am personally going to go for something like this. I think that seems pretty cool. I'm not actually going to change anything here, but you can see that you can change all the different colors and uh, hair color, skin color, eye color, all that wonderful stuff. And you can also change the facial hair and so on and so forth. We're going to go for a nice little beard right there. And we're also going to change his hairstyle a little bit. Maybe something a bit longer right there. All right, that seems pretty cool. And then you can also change their voice. So yeah, you can suggest a name if we want to. And uh, I actually, you know what? I'm just going to go for Borgar. Uh, that's actually kind of hilarious because I think that might actually sound kind of in keeping. And then we can choose from Scoundrel, Brute, Scholar, Gallant, and Misanthrope. Speak your mind. I await your instructions. Yes. What? Hmm. Yeah. Don't you have another leg spittle? And there we have it. So that's a little, um, shall we say, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, they are basically um, sort of emphatic sounds. So whenever you select your character or something like that, I don't actually think that the main character has a somewhat voice. I, I know a lot of the characters in the game are voice actors. And uh, personally, from what I've experienced so far, I feel like the voice acting is very good. There are a few exceptions, obviously, that is to be expected. But I think on the whole, and I'm talking about, I don't know, 98%, I think are all very, very nice. And otherwise, Misanthrope, you, you can kind of tell how I'm going to play this guy. And we're going to go and finalize our character right here. And let's do it. Oh, why didn't I look here first? And more to the point, why must I come fetch you for every little thing? And here we are in the game, and Beline is talking to us, and uh, we can now choose what we are going to say. All right, so I'm going to say, sorry, what am I supposed to be doing? Ugh, you do know this is the day the Lords of Isselbright are visiting? You are simply the laziest... Never mind. The Lords are already here and waiting to be served. And for goodness sake, don't forget to gather your things from your chest before you come to table. Alright, so we've received a quest. Now bear in mind that this game is very old school in the way that it does some things. And I think that some of you are going to be very pleased about this. Because there is a very specific, and I'll show you very very soon what I'm talking about, very specific feature that I think you are going to very much like if you are a fan of the way old school RPGs and dungeon crawlers specifically actually do. Um, does some things. Alright, so this is obviously the main quest, side quests, and then you have the, your journal. Okay, so now here's the, this is the feature I was talking about. The journal right here. You can read about the world's lore by navigating to the compendium tab. However, if you take a look at the journal, I will literally be able to type exactly what I want. Um, I, I have arrived. And then we can add to our journal right here. So, obviously, if I Wait a minute. Do I? Wait a minute. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I haven't actually used this before, so I have arrived at the estate of Espen, and I love it here so far until the biggest attack in the, in in the world's history uh, is upon us, uh, uh, upon me, upon us, upon me, upon us. And there you go, boom, done. So now here's the thing. This is a way for you to be able to remind yourself where a particular character is or where an item was picked up or where a chest is if it's locked or something like that. I really have no idea the amount of things that you could even put in here, but generally this is going to be very, very interesting and, in my opinion, extremely useful. So, yeah. Anyway, now we can move around. 
and you can open your local map. This is the local map right here, so it shows entrances, exits, etc. And you can give more orders to your characters by double clicking on a location, move your character towards the highlighted location to enter the Aspen Mansion. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go into the mansion itself, and there are a number of ladies and lords in here that we are going to have to serve for the moment. Make haste, poor guard. Oh, the guests are waiting, says one of these guards. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, so at the moment, I am having the ability to see where I need to go because, of course, they are trying to teach me how to use the map and all that wonderful stuff. But obviously, if there's a random NPC somewhere out in the world and I need to remind myself about where it is, then obviously I can enter that in the journal. I actually saw a review on the Steam page for this game that basically said I couldn't remember where an NPC was and now I kick it. I'm, I'm basically you know I'm talking about this guy's review here um, and now I'm kicking myself for not taking notes like I used to and that's what I'm trying to say here you don't need to take notes because there's an in-game journal that you can actually take notes with which is actually amazing in my opinion I think that's super super cool anyway there we go to equip an item on your character blah 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 there we are fantastic so now what I can do is I can literally do this Boom, double click, and there we have it. Now he has equipped that, and we can also equip the shield, and we can also equip the light leather armor. And there we have it. Uh, we probably want to... Do we want to use this, actually? I, I actually don't even know what's better, to be honest. I mean, if we want to prevent ourselves from dying from slashing damage, then obviously the leather armor is much, much better. But, oh well, never mind. Okay, so now we can go over here to the meeting room. And we are going to be able to see a much broader example of the voice acting. At last. Ugh, don't go twisting an ankle in all your hurry. You take care of the drinks. Lord Woolcraft and Lady Larenthal prefer wine. Lord Joran would like ale. Lady Virulin and Lord Espen want mead. Go! All right, so the world of Yerangal holds plenty of spoils and riches. You may find many of them in containers of various sorts. You may highlight all visible containers around you by pressing the tab key. Look, there, there it is. It's pretty, pretty fantastic, right? All right, so now we can go into the side quest area and we can literally see a small reminder about what we need to provide them. So, Walcroft and Larenthal, they want wine. So there's Warcroft and Virulin wants mead. Okay. Yes, I am thirsty. Yes, of course you are thirsty. So let's go to the serving table and I will take all of the stuff. That's literally what you have to do. You have to take all the stuff from the serving table. It's not just automatically going to be in your hand, of course. So let's go over here and... Oh, I have actually forgotten what she wants now. Yes, I'm very good at this. Okay, so, ah, yes. Mead. Mead. You want mead? There we are. Just what I wanted for a change. Oh, yes, fantastic. Warcroft, you want wine, do you, sir? There is your wine. Fantastic. And uh, Lord Joran would like ale. Okay, let's go around the table and give him that. He wants ale. You know this is supposed to be served at room temperature. Well, very good. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, she wants wine, I assume, right? She wants wine, but I I may have forgotten. Yes, Lady Larenthal prefer wine. She is going to get that. Yes, now I don't expect you to toss me a coin, but uh, kindly show yourself out and throw yourself off a cliff. Thank you very much. Okay, so anyway, let's have a look here. And Lord Espen wants mead. He's the last guy. You're here, finally. Ah. Good. Shall we do business, gentlemen? Gentle ladies? Yes, let's. We are convened to discuss the situation with Daron Gould. What has been rumored and suspected for so long has finally come to pass. A council of nobles with mining interests in the town have declared themselves independent from the crown of Isilmoral. I don't like this dirty business. Sending a list of grievances to the king. Sounds more like the actions of a bunch of uppity peasant farmers than nobility. There are ways these things are done. And there are ways that kingdoms may crumble. I understand your feelings on the matter, Lady Larenthal. But Darren Gould enjoys the sympathies of many important persons here in the North, and I number myself among them. 
What's more, there have already been defections among the Azimeril nobility, most recently Alnar. She speaks of your son, Lord Espen, who chose to forsake his birthright to join the rebels. Ah, yes. Thank you, Lady Larenthal, for reminding me. And I'll thank you, Lady Viren, not to speak his name on this estate, nor in my hearing again. Oh, why, I will... <laughs> but you won't. Whatever the loyalties of, uh, the young Lord of House Espen, the Southern nobles have many legitimate complaints. Heavy. Some say ruinous taxation, delayed shipments thanks to the Crown's regime of inspections and checkpoints, the King's insistence that Daron Gould's military, e even the Town Watch, must be trained in the North. It's quite a list. Yes, it's all very sad. I'm sure they toss and turn the night away on their beds of gold bars. Taxation and bureaucracy are simply the facts of managing a prosperous nation, of keeping our enemies at arm's length. How long would their precious minds keep producing without the king's protection? Did you know I heard this rebellion was prompted in part by a belief making the rounds in Deron Gould that the king himself is cursed? <laughs> oh my! What exceptional nonsense! <laughs> Have they been breathing the fumes of their own minds? All right, very amusing. But like Lady Varellen, I am not unsympathetic to our southern friends. Surely some of Isildbright's rules and dictums could be culled, especially if it means avoiding war, a much more costly proposition than losing a handful of coin in taxes. Wise counsel, my friend. But I fear the time for compromise is already past. The message from Daron Gould was deliberately provocative, leaving the king no way to negotiate or save face. The time has come, lords and ladies, for us to commit our forces and our purses to our rightful liege and crush Daron Gould. Or throw in with the rebels. They have the gold, they have a well-trained army, and, most importantly, they control the mines. In a conflict of any significant length, having control of the source of the kingdom's metals means they must only outlast the North, rather than outright defeat her. You there, what is your opinion on recent developments? You're asking the errand boy? What does... Kindly do not interrupt me while sitting at my table, Lady Larenfall. Well, speak up. And here we have an opportunity to provide our opinion. Okay, so a peaceful solution must always be best, especially if the only point of contention is money. That is one option. And then the next one is whether or not Darren Gold has legitimate grievances is beside the point. They must be crushed. To do otherwise would invite rebellion from every quarter. And then the last option is, since I have little experience in political matters, for me, the wisest course is silence. I'm actually going to say the second one, because crushing things is certainly what uh, my character does best. Indeed, there is truth in what you say. I have often found fear to be a more useful asset than respect. We are under attack. Please take shelter at once. Perhaps the cellar. You may wish to arm yourselves, my lords. How much time do we have? Too little, I'm afraid. Their numbers are overwhelming. We were forced to fall back to the main gate, and they're already... Surely they will listen to reason, wherever they're from. They won't kill us out of hand like so many soldiers. They wouldn't dare, right? Calmly. My friends, let's all go out to meet them. They're not bandits after all. Yes, go ahead. You have my blessing to speak on my behalf if it's of any use. You? What? Where are you going? Come with me. 
Make haste. All right, so this is where we get the opportunity to now follow Lord Espen, and hopefully we will be able to achieve, well, I was going to say victory, but uh, yes, uh, safe passage out of here, I guess, it will be the, the main thing, the main goal. But what is it, my lord? That sound? The main gate has already been breached. The House of Espen is about to fall to the agents of Daron Gould. Now, never mind that. Just follow. And you, ready your weapon. With all the time you spent training under my Master of Arms, you must be able to defend yourself by now. Well, I will try my best, Lord Espen. But you know me, I only have a small club in my hand, and a very, very small shield as well. Okay, wait a minute. It seems like a Darren Gould soldier is now starting to deal damage nearby to me. There they are! Combat has started. You are free to stay out of the fight this time around. Soldiers of the estate can handle themselves. If you decide to engage the attackers, clicking on them will send your character to attack. You can also attack both hostile and non-hostile creatures by clicking on the sword icon on the user interface or pressing left control on your keyboard. During combat, some spells and abilities may cause combatants to be affected by status effects, their duration expressed in turns. Each turn takes 5 seconds to pass on the full speed. Yeah. Alright, so can I actually... Uh, hmm, I would like to kill the archer. Okay, maybe not. Let's kill the let's kill the spellcaster. Oh, I am missing. Okay, what about this? I'm gonna use my ability. Oh, oh, an explosion happened. An explosion happened, and I absolutely murdered that caster. Okay, that was that was actually kind of impressive, if I do say so myself. There's loot. Give me that loot. Give me that sweet, sweet loot. Very nice. Wow, that's a, that's actually a lot of stuff. How how much can I actually even take? I don't think I can even take that much, to be honest. Um, these shields don't even have any blocking chance, as you can quite clearly tell. They have 0% blocking chance at the moment, so that is kind of useless, and most of this stuff is not actually any good. Apart from maybe the Claymore, I think that's a two-handed sword. Yes, it is. Hmm. This might be useful. I'm gonna take the uh, I'm gonna take this sword, and I think that's. I mean, I could take all of it. Uh, my life is so bright. Yes, very good. Okay, so yeah, let's uh, let's follow. Okay, so we can tell what our health is, by the way, by our little avatar down here. Okay, the combat has started once again. Okay, let's do this. Okay, you know, all I can say is thank goodness these guys actually know how to fight because I'm I'm a, I'm having some issues. Oh, oh no, maybe not, maybe not. We're actually dealing some pretty decent damage right here. That's a berserker. Oh, we killed him in one hit. Oh, we knocked him down. We knocked him down because of our abilities. Oh, that's actually super super nice. I wasn't expecting that. Guard this door with your life, Borga. Come with me. I'm trying to get his gravitas in the voice, but uh, yes, it's a bit difficult. Yes, absolutely. Okay, wait a minute. To me. Listen closely. This is important. The Lady Espen was the love of my life. My one love. There was nothing arranged about our betrothal. My lord, it sounds like the fight is coming to us. Perhaps we'd best ready ourselves. Ooh, um, I'm going to say and, actually, because I'd like to hear more about what he has to say. You were never so lucky as to meet her yourself. But if you had, she... God's damn this Darungun swine. Behind me is my dressing chamber. Go fetch my sword from there. My lord, maybe a few clever words would serve better than a sword right now. Or, I'm ready to fight, fetch your own sword. Or, I'm no soldier, perhaps I will be spared if I surrender. Or, I will say at once, my lord. What? Are you serious? There's no way I'll say I'm no soldier. Come on now. At once, my lord, I will say. Time is short. Hurry. Okay, so let's go over here. Where's his sword? There it is. He's gonna stab me. 
Oh no, he's not going to stab me. I thought to myself, he's going to stab me. He had a dagger. Search all the rooms. Leave no one alive. As you command, Lord Aldnor. Found you at last, father. Didn't figure you would try and hide from your fate. To be betrayed by my own son. Who wouldn't hide from such a terrible end? I've learned a few things, you see. Things your priests and man-at-arms could never teach. I have gained a new perspective. Seen the truth of this world. So, you were not even paid in coin to turn traitor against your own house. Only pretty words. Kill me if you wish. But I promise it will avail you nothing. Every man pays for his sins, my son. And the price of a sin such as this... Well... Enough of your piety! It sickens me. But your last decision, at least, is the correct one. Hold still, father. Don't worry, my child. Your hardships are over for today. Get up, lazy boy. It's time to go to bed. What? Where am I? Lord Espen, he... I have to go back. That doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna say, what? Where am I? What? Does this look like Rothgar's realm to you? You're in my hut. You don't understand. I have to save Lord Espen. There was an attack, and... Oh, hush, child. There's nothing you can do for him now. My crone's voice is certainly not as good as hers, that's for sure. But no more questions for tonight. There's a cot over there. You should try to get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow will be a very, very long day. You can send your character to rest by clicking the rest button. Resting will replenish some of your character's health and restore spell and ability uses. Beware though, sleeping out in the wilds comes with the risk of attracting the beasts and rough faces of the area. Seeking out and sleeping at inns is a safer and more comfortable option. Alright, so there's the resting option right there. You can also press T on your keyboard if you'd prefer. Wake up, lazy. Always sleeping, this one. Must have been raised by dream wraiths. Good morning, or excuse me, I was raised by... Oh no, he's... he's dead, yes. Hey, just because you've clearly never heard of beauty sleep doesn't mean that you need to impugn my work ethic. I'm gonna say that because I think that's hilarious. Well, if you've got any ethics at all, you'll help an old woman around the house. Now, how about you make yourself useful and weed the garden? Well, uh, we have four options here. Well, pff, very well, let's just get to gardening. That's what I like to hear. Now, I'll be making a stew this evening. You'll be helping. I need you to go find some things for us. Take a look at this list. Once you've read it, let me know, please. Okay, to read the list, open the inventory. And there is your quest inventory. So you literally have to go and read this item to be able to find out exactly what you need. And in my opinion, I feel like that's super nice. That very much gets you into the atmosphere. It very much immerses you in the world because you're, you're thinking to yourself, well, how do I do this? Well, you have the list on you. It's just a case of, boom, there it is, you know. Okay, here we go. A handful of bruise root, one brown stem mushroom, and a slab of fox meat. All right. So uh, let me let me exit here. I guess. A strong magical force is keeping the. Oh well. Uh, uh, should I speak to her again? Ah. I have something that will help you gather what we need without hurting yourself too much. Here, put these on. You will give it an item with special attributes. When worn, such items modify your stats, attributes, skills, etc. Gardening gloves. Okay, now that's actually really funny. Okay, they get, they're going to give me plus 
to brewing and drying. Offers the ability to craft potions, of course. Yes, that's that's what we that's what we had before. There's also a magic staff that I picked up that is currently unidentified. I wonder whether I can identify that at some point later on. Good. You put your gloves on just like the rest of us. All fingers at the same time. You weren't trying to put them on one finger at a time, were you? Good, good. Now off with you. When you've got everything on the list, come back and I'll get to making that stew. By the way, be careful of the creatures in the forest. They can be a bit bitey. Take this stuff as well. It should come handy should you need to protect yourself. Well, I won't need the staff, thank you very much, because obviously I am, uh, well, I'm a, I'm, well, kind of a barbarian. I'm a Highlander. Surely I won't need that. Anyway, you can zoom out quite far in the game. And what's that? Who's that over there? Open your map to find the re ingredients requested. Okay, so there you go. There's a spider colony over there and a conspicuous bush. Okay, so, wait a minute. Who's this? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Greetings, fellow traveler. I am Volunteer. Please forgive me if I if I seem confused. I am not well just now. The Druidic Order sent me to heal this forest. There is an invasive species of spider I am to cleanse. But they have unfortunately got the better of me. I have been severely bitten, and they are venomous as well. I cannot continue. I considered approaching the cabin, but I was repulsed. The yellow spiders are destroying the natural balance in this area. I am too weak to fight them now, but perhaps you could finish this good work on my behalf. Okay, literally, I can attack this guy. I feel like that is super, super fun. I really, really like that. I like the ability to be able to decide whether you want to attack random NPCs that you meet, because generally, if you want to play a somewhat evil character or if you want to play the hero you know helping everyone that you possibly can then obviously you can do that too i personally i am gonna attack i'm gonna attack him i'm gonna attack him you i am barely able to stand but nevertheless i shan't take your threat lying down if you're hoping for easy riches you are bound to be disappointed all right let's do this Murder him. I have no idea how much damage this guy can actually do. I'm going to use prolonged... Oh my. I think I'm dead. Yes. I am. All right. Probably not a good idea to actually attack that guy then. Because it seems like he was much more powerful than I anticipated. All right. So once again, we are here speaking to Mr. Volunteer. And as you can quite clearly tell, it's probably not going to be a case of me attacking him. I have changed my equipment slightly, though. Instead of using the serving robes, I am now using the leather tunic. So hopefully that's going to help us a little bit to be somewhat more survivable in this area. Yes, I will clear out these yellow spiders for you. Thank you for serving the Green Mother. There are four places in the forest where the infestation is thickest. A colony to the north and south, and another bunch near a conspicuous bush, also to the south, and one by an old bridge to the west. Very sorry for killing you. I mean, attempting to kill you, sir. Ah, uh, yes, I'm sure he doesn't really mind because he got the best of me very easily. All right, so let's head on over to the conspicuous bush and see what's going on here. Okay, so there's the... Uh, oh, hello there. Okay, I'm going to just pause real quick. Can I actually tell? No, I, I can't tell how much HP these guys have. Let's just attack them then. Oh, that was easy. Oh no, I'm going to miss a whole bunch. I've got to slay this fox as well. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, so there's also a mushroom right there. I'm not sure whether that's the mushroom I need to pick up. But I think it's probably that I need to interact with the bush itself. Anyway, it says, Slay the fox wandering the area to collect its meat for the crone. You can do this by ordering your character to attack it. Spellcaster characters may alternatively use an offensive spell from among their memorized spells. All right. So, yeah. Anyway, we're just going to go over here and interact with this. What do we get? Bruise root. Yes, we need that. Thank you very much. And we are now going to go over and slay the fox and we can hold control as it taught us earlier to be able to attack neutral characters oh yes a good miss right there very nice okay i don't think i have enough uh 
Yeah, I don't think I have enough space, do I? No, no, I actually do have enough space. That's just a smaller window. Okay, good to know. Fantastic. Okay, so yeah, there we are. Okay, so that's done. And now we should probably... Yeah, we've already looted what we needed from here. I've also already eliminated all the spiders, but there is a spider down here. I'm actually not sure. Is that a yellow one? Yeah, these are yellow spiders. So we can attack these too. Yes, there we go. We're going to take a little bit of damage from these, but it shouldn't be too bad. It feels like the greatsword feels a lot better than the one-handed. I'm not entirely sure. It's probably because, oh, that was a critical. That was a critical and a half, wasn't it? And this is a brown stem mushroom, which, of course, we need for the quest. Thank you. And there's also something over here, too. This Isn't this interactable? Isn't there something... There's something to do here. Ah, mushrooms. Yes. Okay. Now, we do need to go... Uh, that guy said over near the... Let's have a look. Tommy spotted four areas. Oh no, it's one of those times when I should have made a journal entry. I am an absolute idiot. Ah, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think we should be okay. I think we should be fine. I just literally need to find the bridge. I think I haven't slain the spiders near the bridge. Oh, wait a minute, did I slay these already? Yeah, I think I slayed those. All right. Yeah, by the way, we haven't even seen the world map yet, and the world map is absolutely sprawling. It is huge. So if you're worried that this is literally the, the you know, the entirety of it, no, don't worry about that. Okay, yeah, that spider is looking real dangerous. I don't really want to go over to that. What's this? Let me loot this real quick. It's just a regular flower of some kind, but I'm going to try and pick up as much as I possibly can because you never know when something is going to come in handy. Uh, we, what, what are these things? R white writhers. Okay, yeah. Hopefully they're not going to be aggressive. And these are more spiders. I don't really want to attack the uh, the uh, red spotted and black ones. Because they're probably going to be really dangerous. But, I mean, knowing the starter area in this game. I mean, this is technically the starter area. It really shouldn't kill me. But I am very worried about that kind of thing. So maybe it would be a better idea to just be cautious there's another spider nice and there we have it fantastic i think i have killed yeah there i have slain the lone spider by the bridge and there's the bridge right there so that's the exit out of this area which is nice and i think ah here we go we've got some more spiders over here i can't believe i missed oh no i'm poisoned as well oh fantastic okay Oh, so much damage. The critical damage is so incredibly fun. If you can get a critical, every single target will explode upon you hitting it. Oh, super nice. And there we have it. Okay. I think that's probably it. Volunteers. Yes, are they all slain? Yes, your eight-legged nemeses will trouble the forest no more. Thank you for your help. I need more time to recuperate, but I believe I will recover eventually. Take this antidote. I've had more than I need already. Now that the spiders are gone, you will make better use of it, I'm sure. Okay, well, uh, keep the antidote for yourself. Thank you. I don't. Uh, well, it's good to be prepared for anything. I don't need a vial of your spit mixed with herbs. Your other gear will come in handy, however. Uh, I'm going to say thank you. It's good to be prepared for anything. Here you are, then, and thank you. Now that my mission is complete, I shall leave to report this great success. All right. And we have now gained enough experience to level up. All right, let's do it. Okay, so we now have the ability to do bargain and research. Uh, actually, bargain and persuasion, learning and research, and brewing and drying. I actually don't know whether we should increase our brewing and drying skill at all. I'm thinking bargaining and persuasion might be, might be more fun. I mean... Brewing and drying is what we're naturally good at, though. That's the thing. Uh, no, I actually, you know, I no, I want to do persuasion. I want to do persuasion. We're gonna we're gonna stick with that, and we're also gonna be going for another seasoned warrior uh, point here. I mean, I could f technically force locks and doors, which 
I mean, you can see here, I already have a 38% chance, and I think that's probably going to be enough. What does outdoor survival do? Increases health regained while resting at outdoor locations. Hmm. I mean, we already have 23%, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So yeah, we're going to go for Seasoned Warrior here, and then we're also going to be increasing Large Blades. I'm basically just going to increase Large Blades a huge amount, because I really like this greatsword that I'm using right now. And Spells and Abilities, we're going to go for shatter Shattering Shot. I think that sounds pretty fun. So that's what we're going to go for. All right. Now let's move back over here. I actually wonder, shall we try and... No, no. You know what? I'm way too injured at the moment. Let's just go back in and see the crone. Ah, the hero returns and with a fresh harvest. It's all there. Yes, perfect. Okay, how can you tell what's in my pack and what isn't? Oh, let's just say it's a feeling like everything is where it should be. Or, if this is easier to accept, I've spent many long days sniffing around, so my nose knows. Oh, yes, I love that. All right, so now that I've gotten what you need, I have more questions about what's going on here, yes. No, no, let's get the pot boiling first, and then... What? What's this? Did you forget to make these herbs edible, child? Come now, you must try them to bring out the flavor. Surely you've cooked before. I have to wonder what that Lord Espen even had your tutors teach you at his fancy estate. Oh, oh well, take this candle and get to drying. Then crush the dried herbs into powder so we have something to season the stew with. All right, various materials collected in the well may serve as ingredients for crafting. Plants, mushrooms, fruits, and insects can be brewed into potions or dried and crushed into powder. Besides the fresh materials, you need tools to perform these actions, a cauldron for brewing and a heat source, like candles or a lantern for drying. To begin drying, you first need to open the inventory screen. Okay, so there's the drying menu. So there literally is an individual menu for this. All right, so we can select this, put this here, select this, put this here. And then we can literally switch between ingredients as well. And there's a heating device. So we should probably take this heating device, put it underneath. Look at how cool that is. I very much appreciate this, to be honest. I think the UI is actually super nice. And your ingredients are now dried. And now we can start crushing. There we are. And now we can collect the ingredients. Fantastic. All right, so we are now done. Good, good, well and dried. Give me just a moment and... There, it's on the fire. Now we have a few precious moments to spare. We should talk. About talking. Alright, so there's never enough time and our time would be better served by discussing matters of import. I'm going to use bargain and persuasion here. Very good. I think you already have the hang of it. But just in case that was a fluke, the idea is this. Taking the time and effort to gain knowledge or even learning to talk will benefit you greatly in the difficult times ahead. Pay close attention to what you might uncover in conversations through wit or charm. Okay, yes, thank you. That's a valuable lesson. I'm glad you find it to be... Now, I'm certain you have more questions. Perhaps I can continue being instructive. Why did you save me from the assault on the Espen estate? I kept an eye on Lord Espen. He was a force of balance in Isil Merald. His death means that balance has failed. And it so happens that I have a soft spot for young people of potential. You were in the wrong place at the wrong time, and I saw a chance to aid you. Okay, well, why is it that you're keeping me here? Who are you, really? Is the stew almost ready? Can I leave yet? I'm going to say, why is it that you're keeping me here, making me do all of this? You weren't ready for Aldnar's attack on his father's manor, and I did, uh, don't believe you were ready for the chaos of the world, as it was when I pulled you from it. You're here to keep you safe and to make sure that you're ready for the next calamity you find yourself in. Who are you, really? I'm afraid that is the one question I can't answer for you. It's easiest to say that I am someone you are meant to meet. I'm here to set you on your way toward what you must accomplish. What is it that I must accomplish? Pardon me, I misspoke. 
There are two questions I cannot answer for you. <laughs> uh, yes, I love the writing as well. Okay, is the stew almost ready? Ah, yes, yes, almost ready indeed. Now, there's something you should know. And, and yeah, she's actually coming in now. When you leave here, the world you knew yesterday will be gone. The attack on the Espin estate was only the first spark of a consuming fire, I am afraid. Much will be lost to strife and war. There are worse things than war, though. There is something you must understand before you leave here. A great and terrible curse has fallen over Isilmerald and much of the rest of Yerengal. It drives men and women to madness. It starves the prince and turns the pauper to a life of desperation. It is the essence of avarice itself. A curse of greed spreads through the land. Greed? What do you mean? A terrible covetousness that hides in mortal hearts. It is among the darkest of dreams. But this is no normal greed, no. There is magic behind it. No mere apprentice's cat trip either. It is most dangerous, and you must understand that. Ah, the stew is done now. Just let it cool. Ah, getting a good look at you now. You're a bit of a fighter, aren't you? Well, I know how to swing a weapon, if that's what you mean. Yes, yes, anyone can. The real test of a warrior isn't confidence or muscle. To stay alive long enough to become a veteran, you need a brain. Well, that doesn't really help, considering I have four intelligence. Now, see that chest over there in the corner? It's locked, and you don't look like the kind of boy who spent a lot of time fiddling with mechanics. Go open it for me. Alright, so yeah, force lock. We can obviously do that, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, actually, wait a minute. To use your skill. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So there's actually a skill here. Force lock. Boom. And there we have it. Ah, don't worry, child. There is treasure inside, but we'll have to get past the beastie to get to it. Now, I'll be joining you for a short while to make sure you don't stab yourself anywhere that won't grow back. If you want to learn to inspire your allies to follow your orders, it's important that you practice. Tell me what you want me to do as we fight. Alright, so we are going to now fight whatever this is. Yes. Your character become, uh, can become the leader of your party by using the command company skill. Click the skills bar of the, above the portrait now, then click the command company button to open the command panel. Alright. There it is. Okay, so we can now set as commander right there. Once your commander is set, you can close the commander panel by right-clicking on the command company button. To apply the commander perk you selected, the party needs to rest together, training for the tactics the commander chose. Click the rest button to finalize your choices. So we can either select Hit and Run, Phalanx, Hunters in the Dark, Evasive Action, Havoc, and Wolf Pack. I actually have no idea. Ooh, these are all really cool though. Attack speed. Oh, for three. Wow, that's actually insane. I think Hit and Run sounds really, really good. Evasive Action. 3%, no. Physical damage dealt increased. Dodge and parry chance decreased. And no, I don't really think that's good. I'm going to go for hit and run, actually. I think that sounds like so much, so much beastliness. So we're going to go and rest. And we'll use the hit and run tactics. Because I'm thinking that generally being able to attack really, really fast is probably going to help us out a great deal. All right, let's attack. Well, that was easy enough, wasn't it? Very good. You are learning your way around a fight. Remember that you often won't be alone on the battlefield. Now, what was it that we... Ah, uh, yes. Aha! We've done it. The stew is cooked and cooled. Here, boy. This will warm you up after a long, long day. I see that look in your eye again. No, no more questions for today. Eat your stew and get some rest. Alright, so should I 
Should I eat? Should I eat the stew? Is there is there any stew in my in my inventory? No, there isn't. Okay, so told me to have some rest after we have finished. Okay, so I'll just rest. Good morning. I fear that our time together is nearing an end. I still don't really understand what we've been doing here. Actually, I'm not going to say that. I will say thank you for all of your help. No, no, it is no great thing. I needed to be certain you are ready to face the world. So does that mean I am ready? Oh, yes, yes, as ready as one can be. And what's going on out in the world that I need to be ready for? Oh, conflict is to be expected everywhere you go. Great things are coming. More, I cannot say. No, no. Is that all? Yes, that is the gist of it. Things were put in motion all over Yerengel since I plucked you from your father's house. Are you telling me that... Lord Espen was your father, yes. But I'm not even a human. He couldn't be my father. I was merely a servant in his house. Well, I'm just going to say I was merely a servant. The deities of Yerengar were your mother's midwives. They had a purpose in mind for you, and they had to secure your safety so that you could live up to that purpose. You were born into a treacherous world, my dear. It was very important you not be recognized as Espen's heir before the time was right. As the gods peered through the veils of the void, they saw that a Feldegook child is made for survival, possessing the fortitude to overcome hardships both mental and physical. That is why you were formed so perfectly in the image of your mother. As well, the closely guarded secret of your mother's connection to Lord Espen ensured your safety until now. We haven't the time to go into the story in greater detail, but you are a true heir of Lord Espen. Knowing this should be enough. Now you understand why Lord Espen paid you so much attention despite your servitude. The other servants surely did not receive the same education or the same favors nor did anyone else in his house, excepting your half-brother, Aldnar. Oh, God, he killed our father. Okay, um, I'm going to say Aldnar took away my only family. He did, and that is the world I must send you back into. One where the sole heir of Lord Espen committed patricide. One aware, unaware, yet hostile to your existence. Okay, thank you again for the sage advice. Now you must go face the world, Borgar. I have enjoyed our time together. You will find the path clear. Be safe, my child. All right, and our world greed has grew by 50. Well, not, the, not our greed, but the world greed has grew by 50. And apparently we have also leveled up. But for now, I will be ending this episode off here and uh, I'm going to be making another one, I think, because I personally feel like we have barely scratched the surface of this wonderful RPG. It, it feels very reminiscent of things like Baldur's Gate and I really love Baldur's Gate in general. I used to play a huge amount of Dark Alliance and this, this feels like a... I don't know, like a deeper version of that, maybe. I I don't know, it's been a while since I've played that. Anyway, if you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. Highly recommend it. It's actually being updated to version 1.0 very, very soon, if it hasn't already by the time you watch this. And so I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.